Upstairs, downstairs, condo owner sues both neighbors over noise. A year after unsuccessfully suing her downstairs neighbor for making too much noise, a BC woman has also failed in a bid to sue her upstairs neighbor over similar complaints. A small claims court rejected Linda Wu's claim against upstairs neighbor Lorenzo Bruno last week, instead ordering the Burnaby woman to pay Bruno $50 recompense for unreasonable ceiling tapping and cupboard slamming she made in response to his alleged noisemaking. The BC Civil Resolution Tribunal decision is the latest chapter in a Strata saga that spans years, involving multiple complaints to both the Strata Council and police, who described Bruno's noises at one point as him just going about his life. A particular sensitivity to noise. In the latest round of hostilities, Wu sued Bruno for running appliances during quiet hours, entertaining guests, stomping, dragging furniture, dropping objects, slamming cupboards, a motorized exercise bike, and flooring creaks, knocks, and pops. Bruno countered by claiming he was the victim, and that was constant complaints to the strata and the police amount to harassment. The latest decision was accompanied by the dismissal of a separate claim who filed accusing the strata council of inadequate investigation. The outcome is identical to the fate of Wu's claims last year against the strata council and downstairs neighbor Eliza Amarsher. In that case, decision-maker Kristen Gardner said she accepted that Wu found the everyday living noises from Ms. Amarshi's unit, including talking, to be subjectively unbearable. But she also said the evidence leaves open the possibility that Ms. Wu has a particular sensitivity to noise, and the law of nuisance requires that an ordinary person with realistic expectations would have found the noise unreasonable. The test for nuisance. More than 1.5 million British Columbians live in strata housing, an arrangement where condo owners have title to their individual lots, but own the common property and common assets of a building as a strata corporation. The building at the center of the dispute is one of four low-rise wooden structures comprising the strata's 285 units. Residents are required to mitigate unreasonable noise with quiet times lasting from 10 p.m. until 7 a.m. on weekdays and 9 a.m. on weekends and holidays, according to the first set of decisions, who began complaining about a marsher in 2017. The complaints involved various knocking and banging sounds, talking, running the dishwasher and other appliances, a loud fan and a patio door slamming. In August 2021, the Strata Council paid Wu $10,000 to settle a human rights tribunal claim she filed alleging discrimination, the deal released the council from claims predating that time and was supposed to adjust the process to deal with Wu's complaints. The battle hit the civil resolution tribunal when a marsher sued Wu, prompting a counterclaim. A marsher later dropped her claim, but Wu continued with her lawsuit. At the heart of the legal battle is the question of when noise becomes a nuisance. The test for nuisance depends on several factors, such as its nature, severity, duration, and frequency, Gardner wrote. The test is objective and is measured with reference to a reasonable person occupying the premises. Difficult, if not impossible, to detect. According to the Amarsher decisions, Wu attempted to record alleged noise on her cell phone, asking the strata to use earbuds to listen to the recordings or to listen to them off a cell phone because the quality is lost in an email attachment. The strata says that even with speakers on at full volume, the alleged noise in Ms. Wu's recordings is difficult, if not impossible, to detect, Gardner wrote. I agree. According to tribunal documents, the Strata Council had agreed to pay $1,200 for Wu to stay in a hotel for three days to run acoustical testing, but it never happened because she was dissatisfied with various aspects of the logistics. The Strata Council came up with a hit and miss plan to have a council member visit for a couple of hours after 10.30 p.m. on a Friday night in the hopes of hearing the noise, a proposal the decision says Wu rejected as ridiculous. Likewise, the tribunal member found it was impractical to have a council member essentially be on call for Ms. Wu to contact in the middle of the night to listen to the alleged noise. Three Strata members ultimately went to Wu's unit and the unit above to attempt to recreate the noise transfer Ms. Wu was alleging but were unable to verify the degree and severity of the alleged noise. Some degree of give and take. In regards to Bruno, the upstairs neighbor, the latest tribunal decisions say Wu made more than 300 complaints, mostly about creaking, popping, and knocking noises related to his flooring. In his defense, Bruno admitted he had used his washing machine during quiet hours shortly after moving in once, but he denied making a motoring noise and the evidence was unclear as to whether other sounds like an abnormal snapping or humming noise came from his suite or the building itself. By contrast, 
Tribunal member Megan Stewart found Wu admitted tapping on her ceiling to get Bruno's attention and submitted a recording of a call to police where she said she poked her ceiling and slammed her cupboard so that he would understand. Based on those admissions, Stewart ordered Wu to pay Bruno $50 for creating a nuisance, a finding she said she couldn't reach in regards to Wu's claims. Though I accept the noises Ms. Wu hears bother her, I do not agree that on an objective basis she has shown they rise to the level of negligence or nuisance, Stewart concluded. Living in a strata building involves some degree of give and take among neighbors when it comes to noise and other potential nuisances.